Okay, let's get started. Um, hi everyone and welcome to another NetBiz webinar. Today we'll be talking about how to test bandwidth with iPerf. My name is Panos Vuzis. Uh, I'm a co-founder and CEO at NetBiz and I will be your host today. Here's a quick overview of the agenda. So I'm going to start with, you know, some introductory things about iPerf, uh, what, what is it and what it can do for you. I'm going to show you um, what is the lab setup I'm going to be using for today's demonstration. And I'm going to demonstrate how to use iPerf through uh, a GUI, also known as JPerf from Java uh, Perf. Uh, do the same thing on the command line. Uh, then finally, I'm going to show you how to do um, bandwidth monitoring with iPerf. So today's goal is to um, demonstrate, of course, but also um, hopefully teach you and educate you how to test bandwidth um, with, uh, with iPerf. Uh, hopefully, when we are done, you will be able to run this by yourself with your own uh, lab setup, or, but also in the field, right, um, at your own convenience. So what is iPerf, right? So it's a free Linux uh, tool that um, it's open source and can be used either on the command line or through a GUI. Um, so all it does actually is very simple. Uh, it pushes TCP or UDP traffic between two hosts and, um, and um, measures how much of this traffic can push. Um, it supports all major platforms, Linux, Windows, uh, Mac OS, and also you can find actually versions uh, or applications, mobile applications for Android and iOS. And there are um, apps out there, some free, some paid that you can use. There are two major, two major versions, iPerf 2 and iPerf 3. Uh, 3, of course, is more recent, um, but both of them are being maintained right now. Uh, uh, in parallel, and they're independent to each other. Um, I don't know why they did that, but some people decided to run to write a new version of iPerf, and for maybe some justifiable reasons, they didn't couldn't make it compatible with iPerf version two. That means that when you run an iPerf test between two hosts, you have to make sure that both hosts run the same version, either two or three. If you try to mix the two, it won't work. Um, so, how to install iPerf? Um, so you're attending this webinar and you have received already instructions from us how to do that. If you haven't done that, you still have time for that. <laughs> a couple of minutes, that's all it takes actually. Uh, you can catch up with us later. So go to netbiz.net slash webinar. We have the instructions there, the links to download iperf and jperf. So download the links, extract the files, um, follow the instructions for your platform, if it's Windows or, or Mac. And if you are a Linux user, you can, and on Debian based Linux at least, you can install um, iPerf uh, version two by just running apt get install iPerf and iPerf version three with apt get install iPerf three. So before I move on, uh, just a reminder if you have any questions uh, during the webinar, um, use the Q&A um, uh, panel to send them over and we'll answer them uh, at the end of the webinar. So now, why do you want to use iPerf? I see three main use cases here. The first one is when you do stress testing during your um, deployment. Uh, so that can be, for example, when you set up a circuit that's supposed to um, be supporting, let's say, 500 megabps, and you want to make sure that uh, you know you can test it and delivers that that bandwidth right from both ends. Um, the second one is when you're troubleshooting, when you receive that dreaded um, the network is slow ticket, uh, and uh, it's you know upon you to prove that it is or it's not uh, the network. So if you have the ability to run a bandwidth test from the user's location towards your data center or the cloud, then you can prove that it is the network or it's not. And finally, if you're going to do continuous monitoring, that means that you run iPerf uh, periodically, let's say once an hour or a few times a day, and you create, you build, you collect all these data points, you create statistics and a baseline, um, and um, that uh, you can use that to um, 
as alerting. Uh, for example, um, if you uh, see that the bandwidth drops from your baseline, you can use that as a notification that something went wrong in that location, go and take a look. So keep in mind that when you use Iper, when you run an Iperf test, um, you consume actual bandwidth. So you push that traffic to your network, your circuits. So make sure that you don't run it, don't run it too often, right? You, cannot, you shouldn't run an Iperf every minute in production and consume like 100 or 200 megabps every time, right? That's going to be consuming useful bandwidth um, uh, of your network and you defeat the purpose of monitoring or creating baseline pretty much. Okay, so here is my laptop uh, setup. Um, um, so to run iperf, you need two hosts, right? A sender of traffic and a receiver of traffic. And these two hosts can be your laptop, the one you're using right now for this webinar, can be a Raspberry Pi. So if you have one laying around, you can um, you know, uh, boot it up, install iperf the way I showed you earlier, and uh, use it as another host to send or receive traffic. Or you can use public iperf servers um, I'm going to show you, actually, we set up a, um, a public iperf server at iperf.netbiz.net that you should be able to use for today's webinar. And of course, you have to make sure that there is routing between the two hosts um, to send and receive the traffic. And finally, that the receiving end of the, of the, of the traffic um, has the specific port you are using open. Uh, the default port for iperf2, for example, is 5001. And the most common problem when people, um, you know, like reach out and complain that iperf doesn't work is that uh, there's a firewall rule that blocks um, incoming uh, traffic to that port. And you have to open the port to, to make that happen, right? Otherwise, it won't work. Um, OK. So public iperf servers, there are you can find, you know, if Google public iperf servers, you can find the number of them out there. For today, for today's webinar, you can use this um, uh, iperf server at iperf.netbiz.net. Um, <clears throat> I set it up. It's listening on ports 5000 to 5009 for iperf2 and 5200 to 5009 for iperf3. Um, um, so when you use IPerf, public iperf servers, keep in mind that um, you don't know the, you know, who is maintaining the servers. You don't know what are the networking capabilities of the servers. Uh, you don't know who else is using the server at the same time you are using them to run an iperf test. So your measurements, you know, your mileage can vary there in terms of your measurements. So uh, that's why it's when you're, you know, want to be more reliable and um, consistent with your measurements, it's better if you use your own uh, known um, source and destination of traffic to make sure that your measurements are accurate and reliable, right? So let's move on to the main meat of the presentation, which is how to do this, right? So for this first test, I'm going to be using my laptop as a client in the iperf uh, lingo of the traffic. So the client is the sender of the, of the traffic. And um, I have here my laptop connected to a wireless router. And on the one of the LAN ports of the, of the router, I have a local host, right? That's going to be the, the server or the receiver of the traffic. Um, in, in, again, in um, iperf uh, terminology, right? So I'm gonna um, bring this up here. So here is the, um, let me bring it up. Okay, here is the iperf server. Okay. Okay, bring here the server. So let me increase this here. So um, I say to the server, and I'm going to start now um, the um, JPerf, uh, the GUI version of Fiber for my laptop. So I'm here, I open the Windows command line, I'm going to navigate to the JPerf directory where I extracted um, JPerf, and I'm going to just type jperf.bat, the <coughs> GUI will start. And you can see it here. Oh, here it is. Okay. So if yours looks a little bit different, um, um, might be a different, slightly different version, but the basics should be here, the same options and the buttons might be different, right? But uh, you see here that I'm going to start from the server side first. I'm going to use again this um, uh, local host I have as, um, as an iperf server. I have installed already uh, iperf 
with this command, iperf version two. And I'm gonna start the iperf server. For that, I'm using the option minus S uh, for server and minus I1 to print results every one um, second. Uh, so you see the server is listening on port 5001. And this is a TCP uh, IPERF server. So by default, it's listening for TCP traffic. Now on my client side, I'm gonna uh, use you know the client option. I'm gonna put here the IP of the server that's waiting for my traffic. I'm gonna use the default port 5001. And I'm gonna do a TCP IPERF. You see here the TCP option. <clears throat> so with IPERF, you have um, you can you can uh, you know specify in different parameters of, of your connection like the TCP window size, buffer length, and so on and so forth. I won't go into too much detail about this right now for the purpose of this webinar. Uh, but you can you can you know uh, reach out if you have any questions around those. I'm going to also be reporting the results in megabits. Okay, I chose this option, and I leave everything else the same. So the neat thing about the GUI is that when you type here any options, right, it gives you here on the top what this command would look like if you were to use it on the command line. So that's very neat. Again, if you want to transition to a command-based iperf, you can use the GUI initially, get familiar with the options, um, see how the commands look like, and I'm gonna show you later uh, how I'm gonna do this on the, on the CLI actually, right? So I'm all set. I wanna tell, tell the ones that are participating right now that they don't have any local host to run this against. They can just <coughs> use that uh, public IPERF server I set up, which is iperf.netbiz.net. Leave everything else as a default option and run the same test, right? Uh, so you can follow us even if you don't have a local host in your case. So I'm gonna click run here. And as you can see, the test started. Um, on the left-hand side, I see the GUI uh, plot. And on the right-hand side, I see the server again, printing every second. Um, what traffic it's seeing, right? It's around 110 mega BPS for these 10 seconds of a test, okay? So there you go, as simple as that. Uh, you just run your first uh, hyper uh, test uh, between your, in, in your local lab network, right? Uh, so now let's run a UDP traffic as well, UDP test. Now I'm gonna start again the hyper server first. And for UDP, I add the option minus U stands for UDP, obviously. And now it tells me that it's listening on port, on UDP, on port 5001, right? Now on my client side, I have to choose the UDP option. If I leave it DCP, it won't work. Again, for UDP, you have different parameters here. One parameter that with UDP you have to think about is how much traffic you want to push. You have to specify that, the default is one, but let's put like something like eight right now, right? So I'm all set. I click uh, run and I'm seeing again the UDP test coming through. Uh, you see here, let me do it a little bit smaller. You see here that I can see um, I'm getting, you know, um, I got on average for the 10 seconds of the test, uh, 7.14 mega BPS. And um, the good thing with UDP is that it also gives you um, jitter. You see here on the server side, I got one point. 28 milliseconds, and I can see the same value here on the GUI version, and also packet loss, right? You see here that for this test, actually, uh, 315 packets were lost out of the uh, 6,400 almost packets, right? That's pretty, actually pretty bad. I was seeing much better uh, values earlier. Maybe I have interference right now in my network. <laughs> okay, so let's clear this. So we just did a TCP and UDP hyperf. Just a note for the ones that are using the public server, iperf.netbiz.net, uh, we have disabled uh, UDP traffic <laughs> um, only because um, uh, to avoid any DDoS attacks. Uh, so you can use it only as a TCP uh, iperf server um, for the specific ports, both iperf2 and iperf3, okay? So keep in mind that the GUI versions that I found at least online are all version two, okay? So you won't be able to use them with version three. Um, so, okay. So now let's move on here uh, with the um, uh, next use case, okay? So um, we did the TCP and UDP. Some of you have already demonstrated and run this test on the public hyper server, so it doesn't make a big difference here. You should see the same things. 
that I just showed you uh, with the local LAN um, um, uh, server I have, right? But again, uh, it's good to be able to test over a public um, cloud server when it's necessary. Now I'm gonna reverse the role. So I'm gonna use my, my laptop as the server, which is the recipient of the traffic and the client as the, the host, local host as the sender, right? So let me uh, again bring up the GUI and the, um, the local host, right? So now, of course, I have to start, let's do a TCP test. I have to start here uh, the GUI um, JPER version as the server. So I choose the server option. I leave the default port here, 5001. And um, everything else, again, I'm gonna leave the default options. I'm not touching anything. Uh, run iperf, and now my laptop here is becoming a server. Some of you, my, when you run this, you, you may see notification that is asking confirmation to allow your laptop to receive traffic, right? You need to have administrative privileges to be able to approve incoming traffic for security purpose on your laptop, right? So if you see that, just click allow. And now I'm gonna start the same test here uh, towards my laptop, right? So the IP of my laptop is 10.0.0.1.1 minus I1. That should be it. And there you go. So the test started. And right now it's, I'm seeing here the, uh, the same results, 103 megabps, right? Actually 86 megabps. So something to note here, right? If you remember earlier, when we ran the test the other direction from my laptop towards this host, <clears throat> we got a slightly different values around 100 Mbps if I remember correctly. So that happens, may happen. Um, uh, so make sure when you run NIPERF test, you run it both directions, um, on both directions, to make sure that your bandwidth is symmetric. Uh, so don't rely on one measurement to, 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 to validate your circuit performance, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna stop here now. You have to stop the IPerf server, otherwise your, that port will be occupied on your, on your um, um, laptop, right? So that was the second or the third uh, task. Let's move to the, to the next one, which is to do a reverse IPerf. So this is a very actually cool feature. And uh, let me explain you what, why is this useful. Um, um, so, and what, what's the difference between version two and version three? So now when I run, let's say uh, an IPerf test and my laptop is the client, it starts a test, so it sends traffic to this IPerf server. And then I can ask IPerf when this is done to send traffic back from the server to my laptop. Uh, so um, now uh, when this happens, there's a big difference between version two and version three. In version t two, for this reverse option, what happens is that the client starts, it sends traffic to the server, and then when the server is done, it does the same in reverse. And this is done by the client now becoming the server. So it starts listening to port, let's say 5001. So it establishes a new connection from the server that sits wherever it is towards my laptop, right? So it needs to establish a new connection back to um, back to the you know uh, client to run the reverse uh, test. That's hyper version two. The problem with that is that if let's say your laptop is is behind a nut, right? It's knotted, or if your laptop uh, is um, has any firewall loose blocking incoming traffic, and you're using let's say a public hyper server, then this reverse blue uh, test won't be able to to go through, right? The connection won't be able to be established, and the test will fail. Now in version three, I guess they were smarter when they did that. Uh, when the reverse uh, test happens, it uses the same established connection between the client and the server. So the client starts the test, it sends traffic to the server, and then when the server, it's the server's turn to send traffic back, it uses the same TCP socket, which is already established outbound from the client to the server, and the test will go through even even though you might be behind a NAT or you might have a firewall, right? That's because the connection was established outbound from the laptop to the server. 
Um, that's one of the, I would say, more important difference between version two and version three. And I'm gonna tell you the next one, the next difference um, after we're done with this test. So I'm gonna move back to um, my GUI here. I'm gonna start, clear this. I'm gonna start my hyper server here. Bring results every one second. And now here, I'm gonna be a client. Okay, I'm gonna put here the IP of the local host. And I'm gonna use this option here. Uh, it's called trade or trade off um, on the GUI. And uh, that you will see is gonna start. First, my client is sending traffic to the server. So it's recording that information, that performance. Uh -huh. And let's see now when this is done, the reverse roles and now my laptop is receiving the traffic, right? Of the, of, and you see here also, here it's very easy to see the uh, discrepancy in performance. So you see that when my laptop is the sender, it gets around 120 megabps, but when it's the receiver, um, when the receiver, uh, um, you will be, you see that you get 85 megabps, right? which uh, is much lower, right? So it's a very good indication to uh, that there's a difference here in performance. Of course, it's a wireless network now, so uh, there might be so many different reasons um, that this might, might be the case. Uh, so we covered this as well. Now, I wanted lastly to show you um, how to do this on the command line, right? Actually, I already gave you, gave you a hint. You can see here how the command looks like of this, let's say, specific um, um, uh, hyper test uh, on the top here, right? For example, if I remove this trade option, you see that that the command change, right? If I add it, you get that minus R value, right? So now uh, I'm going to show you how to do this um, in real, in in live here. So I'm going to bring a com bring a command line. Um, okay, that's my Windows command line. So again, here I'm, I extracted the hyper executable here uh, in this directory, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the command line. So I'm gonna start my hyper server. So again, this is like the remote host <coughs> uh, in my LAN network, and this is my Windows laptop. So the command is called hyperf.exe minus C, right, for client, and then the IP of my server, minus I1, and here it is, right? Um, again, uh, it might be initially, if you wanna get started with Hyper, much easier and convenient to do it through um, through the GUI, but let's use the minus R option, for example, for, for, um, for reverse. Uh, but um, once you do it once or twice um, through the command line, you will see that um, um, it's gonna be very easy for you to do it uh, you won't think twice. And uh, I find actually, I, I very rarely use the GUI uh, version. I just use the, uh, I just use the, um, the command line whenever, whenever I can, right? Um, so, uh, and with that, I'm done with the, you know, demonstration command line or GUI version of Hyper one to one. The next uh, <coughs> item I want to cover was how to do this like in a continuous mode, right? <clears throat> so imagine now that you're gonna, again, use Hyper for, for monitoring, for not, not for testing or, or troubleshooting, but run it continuously, periodically, and be able to uh, collect the results, build statistics, and um, uh, even, even get notified when something goes wrong, right? Um, so how can you do that? So Actually, the command line here is where it comes into play because with the command line, you can write, write a bash script on Linux or a batch script on Windows, run it, um, let's say every hour, um, and then collect the results, put them in a log file, create a report <clears throat> around them, right? However, what happens when you're gonna do that from let's say a dozen locations, right? You're gonna collect all the results in a single file and then uh, create a report. Uh, things may, can become hairy and uh, and um, and complicated, and also it's difficult to maintain this um, this, um, this this script and and, and all this uh, logging information, right? So that's where um, you know NetBees comes into play here. So I'm going to show you here again live um, what uh, how NetBees approaches that problem, right? So in a nutshell, 
uh, NetBiz is a network monitoring tool and it uses hardware agents to uh, monitor remote offices. Um, so you see here on this setup, our demo setup, we have 28 <clears throat> uh, of these uh, devices. They can be wireless or wired, so you can run it a wireless iPerf test or a wired iPerf test towards between two different agents. Let's say you have one agent in New York, your New York office and one in, in, in Chicago. So you're gonna run an iPerf test between them, you can do it. Or you can run other types of tests like ping, DNS, HTTP, and trace route. I wanna focus now on the iPerf part here. So I'm gonna show you two things. One is how to run iPerf uh, continuously. So I'm gonna go, and, gonna, gonna go under tests. And you see here, I have set up an iPerf test that runs between our San Jose, two, San Jose, two agents being in a San Jose lab where I'm, I'm at right now. And they run um, every day on these hours of the day. So at midnight, 2 a.m., 4 a.m., 10 p.m., and then uh, 10 to uh, 8 a.m., 10 and, uh, and 11 p.m., right? On the 15th minute. Um, this is, of course, I record all results here. I can go back in time. I can see historical. I can see where things change, where they dropped, right? And for example, this test here is between our San Jose and Pittsburgh offices. Uh, it's a, TCP, a UDP iPerf at five megabps, which also gives us um, a jitter and bucket loss. Uh, and uh, it runs once an hour on the hour. Um, so, um, and um, and the other part of, of the um, of the dashboard here is that uh, you can run the same commands I showed you earlier. Uh, I was doing a test earlier here. Uh, from the command line, you can get the same out output when you're troubleshooting um, through the GUI, right? So here I have an agent, one of these boxes in Pittsburgh, okay. And I'm gonna run a test toward this public server I set up, right? It's gonna be a TCP hyper with the default options. And then again, instead of going and doing a, an SSH session or an RDP to my, my Pittsburgh office, I already have a device there. I have remote access to the GUI. And this device, I can use it now to run hyper for other types of tests to measure performance um, and other metrics, right? So you see here, you can push around, okay, I see here up to 90 megabps. Towards, uh, towards the cloud, right? So the convenience again here is that you have, you can manage these dozens or even hundreds of, of uh, devices through a single dashboard without having to um, access each one individually and uh, do this um, even like on a, on a periodic and scheduled basis. Um, and so with that, uh, I'm done with the, with the presentation. Uh, let's see if we have uh, any questions here. Just a second here. Okay, let's go move to the Q&A session. Um, so I have a question here. Uh, what's the difference between iPerf and uh, speed test? Okay, good question. Um, <clears throat> so speed test, um, everybody familiar with speed test, right? Um, the most well known is the UCLA speed test. And, and it's very similar. So both of them test bandwidth. And the difference is that speed test <coughs> is not open source. You have to use UCLA servers to run your iPerf tests. And they're again towards cloud-based uh, servers, which you don't maintain, you don't maintain, uh, you, you don't know when you're running an iPerf test, who's using the same um, um, iPerf, uh, same, same server for a test. <coughs> so your measurements might not be as uh, precise. Uh, with iPerf, you have full control of the source destination of traffic. Uh, and your measurements might be, will be more reliable and under your control. Another question is, uh, does iPerf support bidirectional throughput test? Yes, it, it does. Uh, actually, I, I covered that earlier. Um, you can uh, do that uh, both on iPerf 2 and iPerf 3. Um, the um, the iPerf 3 version, I think it's more advanced than that in the sense that um, <clears throat> it can send uh, them the reverse um, hyper traffic through the same socket that was already established from the client to the server. And that is very useful when your client is behind the nut, is nutted, and you need to run the reverse test, right? So that's very useful in that case. Um, and what's the difference between version two and version three? 
Um, so I covered some of those differences already. Um, I would say um, one more difference I didn't cover already is that iPerf 2 has the option to, um, to use a single server. Okay, so let me go back to the presentation here, the PowerPoint I had, okay. Uh, yes, go to here. So right now, all the tests we did were from um, one client to one server, right? So in iPerf2, you have the option to have a single server and at the same time run iPerf tests from multiple clients. So we have here three or four or five or 10 iPerf clients and at the same time uh, sending traffic to the same server on the same port and that server would be able to receive all this traffic from all the, all the clients and report the results, right? Um, on um, iPerf3, um, that's not the case. You cannot do that. And so if that's important for you, then you have to choose between iperf 2 and iperf 3 um, So there are two or three major differences. One, one is this one, that iperf 2 supports multiple to one, while iperf 3 doesn't. And the other one is that the iperf 3 uh, can do reverse um, iperf better than iperf 2 um, The workaround for iperf 3 if you want to do multiple to one, is to launch multiple iperf servers on the same machine, let's say, listening on different ports. For example, on this iperf.net is on that server, we have set up 10 iperf processes listening on traffic on these 10 ports, okay? So in that case, if you have up to 10 uh, clients targeting um, each one of them though a different port, then that will work. But again, it's not uh, ideal, right? So in that case, iperf2 uh, is better. Uh, so, okay, with that, we have covered, actually, we're at the half hour mark here, from what I see. Uh, I answered the few questions we had here today. Um, so to summarize, um, iPerf is a very um, uh, useful utility to, to use for bandwidth testing. Um, um, I often, you know, when I talk to network engineers, I ask them if they know about iPerf. I think in the last couple of years, more and more of them uh, know about it than they used to, um, um, and uh, it's very useful, you know, when you're troubleshooting, when, uh, you know, you're doing something um, that needs bandwidth testing, it's good to have everything you, you, you can in your hands, right, uh, available as tools to help you, and iPerf is one that can run on any platform, easy to use, easy to set up, and um, actually it's much more reliable than speed tests when you run um, tests within your own WAN or LAN network. Um, and with that, I want to thank you uh, for um, for attending this webinar. Um, thank you for the questions. And if you want to see more about NetBees, what we do and how you can use iPerf, but a number of other also uh, tools and testing for your own needs uh, in your networks, uh, please call us. We support wireless and wired agents, cloud or public uh, agents. And uh, we give you the ability to do end-to-end -end testing uh, between your locations, right? Um, so, please go to our website, netbiz.net, request a demo, and um, we'll reach out to you to uh, talk in, in more detail about NetBiz and also answer your hyper questions if that's needed. Thank you all, and have, uh, have a nice uh, day. Bye.